So what do we mean when we're talking about loops? Well, it's a concept that can be a little bit difficult to get your head around, but in a basic sense, we're telling Excel to do a certain set of instructions or commands in VBA a certain number of times, so hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of times. Now, this is a great way to get Excel to do a lot of work for us. This video is the fourth of four videos on the basics of Visual Basic Programming in Excel. So make sure you've seen the first three videos before you get onto this one. Right, loops, let's get into it. So what I've got here is a new sheet and I've created a button uh, which is called Create List or I've given the button Create List in the text box there. What I want to do is create a list of numbers just like this and we're going to go from say one to 10. Now we can do this using a loop because we are doing one thing several times. In this case, we're selecting a cell, we're putting a value in that cell, and then we're going down to the next cell. So maybe if you've seen the first three videos in this series, you're thinking, well, I kind of know how to do those things because you know how to create buttons, you know how to put values in cells, and if you've done the positioning, the last video, you know how to move down as well. Okay, so how can we build a loop into that to get Excel to repeat those instructions? Let's go to the Visual Basic Editor and let's start coding. So I'm just clicking on Visual Basic and then insert module. We'll have a new module because it's, it's a new piece of code. And let's call it sub list with loop. So that's a good informative name for the routine. Then we hit enter and we get our end sub command. We're going to have to introduce a new concept for the loop, which is the concept of a variable. Now, the best way to think about a variable is somewhere for Visual Basic and Excel to store a piece of information, but somewhere that we can't see. So it's a little bit like a cell in a worksheet, but a variable, usually we can't see it unless we want to see it, but it's a little piece of memory in Excel that's storing a piece of information. Variables are important for this because variables help us to control loops. They help Excel to understand where the loop starts and ends, and they help Excel to understand how many times we want it to go through that loop, okay? If we use a variable, we have to do something called declaring the variable, and that's what we're gonna do now. Don't worry too much about this, but we're going to say dim counter as integer, and in layman's, layman's terms, we're saying to Excel, we have a variable called counter and it's an integer. So it's always going to be a number. So we're saying to Visual Basic, please reserve a space in, in your memory for this particular variable that's gonna contain a piece of information we're going to use, okay? So that's our counting variable and I've given it an informative name counter so we can tell what the role of the variable is. And then we're going to use a for next loop. So for counter equals zero to 10. Again, don't worry too much about the syntax at this stage, it's fine to copy. And once you see everything, you'll have a much better understanding of what's going on. Then you can go into the detail issues, okay? But we're going to use a for next loop. We have the for element here, and we're going to have the next element at the bottom. So those are the two main elements of the loop, the start point and the finish point. And you'll notice at the start point, four, we've used the variable counter, and at the end point, we've used the variable two. That makes, makes it very clear to Visual Basic, uh, the variable that we're using. All this means is, in layman's terms, do this, do whatever is in the loop 10 times. As you can see, we've told Excel to do this for counter from zero to 10. Every time Excel goes down through the loop, it's going to increase the value of counter by one and then go back to the top of the loop. So the first time it comes through, counter will be zero, then it will be one, two, three, until it gets to 10. And once counter is 10, it stops doing the loop and it comes out of the loop and it will exit the routine. Okay, so that's the basic idea of how the loop works. So we've created the structure for the loop. Now we've got to think, what do we actually want to do? And this is where our positioning and our uh, knowledge of how to change the value of cells comes into it. Okay, 
We're going to use some syntax which is selection.value, so that's the value of the selected cell. And we're going to say equals counter. So again, this is something you're not familiar with. So it's, so it's fine if you're, if you're a little bit shocked by this, but what we're saying is make the value of the cell equal to the counter variable. Okay, we're not gonna to go too far into that, but you will see how it works. So that's going to put a number in the cell. The next thing we want to do is move down one cell. And you will remember from our positioning video, and if you don't, go back to that video and then come back here. Selection.offset is the syntax we use, and then we have two numbers, and those, number con those numbers control the next cell that we go to. In this case, we want to move one cell down, and no cells across. So how do we do that? Okay, I hope you've remembered. One zero is going to move us one cell down and no cells across. Okay, there we go. So let's just give this a go. It's another good coding principle to um, always be trying the code, be experimenting with the code. It's fine. It's absolutely fine if the code doesn't work. It's all about trial and error and all about developing your skill of working with this. So don't be scared of it. As long as you save the file, you're absolutely fine. So let's just give it a go and see what happens. I need to assign the macro to this button. So I right click, assign macro, and then the name of my macro is list with loop and it's an informative name, it's easy to understand. So I'm just gonna select here and then just click the button and see what happens. Okay. That seems to work pretty well. I'm going to do it one more time. Okay, excellent. Seems to be working very well. Okay, so we've used the loop there to create the list and create the list of numbers that we had at the start that we, that we created manually. All it's doing is going into the routine, executing the code, and you can rem remember what our code does. It puts a value in the cell and then moves down one cell. And all the loop is doing is saying, doing that 10 times. So Excel is just going from one cell to the next 10 times, and each time putting a value in the cell. Okay? So that's an introduction to loops. You really have to um, practice this yourself. So make sure you go to the, get the download file from, from our website. And I would suggest going through the whole series of videos from the beginning four videos on the basics of Visual Basic. From the beginning, creating buttons and assigning macro to buttons, changing the value of cells, using the offset uh, command and positioning, um, all the way to what we've done now, which is loops. These really are the building blocks of most Visual Basic routines, so it's well worth getting good at them. Okay, good luck.